Hi everyone, this is Mrs. Olinda. This book is Stone Fox by John Reynolds Gardner. And this is the book that Mrs. Ismail's homeroom has been reading. Some of you were about halfway through before we were sent home on break from the virus. And so I wanted to start from the beginning so you could follow along. Many of you have your book at home and a big shout out to Byron who let me borrow his book. All right, so we're gonna start on chapter one, page three. Grandfather. One day, grandfather wouldn't get out of bed. He just lay there and stared at the ceiling and looked sad. At first, little Willie thought he was playing. Little Willie lived with his grandfather on a small potato farm in Wyoming. It was hard work living on a potato farm, but it was also a lot of fun, especially when grandfather felt like playing. Like the time grandfather dressed up as the scarecrow out in the garden. It took little Willie an hour to catch on. Boy, did they laugh. Grandfather laughed so hard he cried. And when he cried, his beard filled with tears. Grandfather always got up real early in the morning, so early that it was still dark outside. He would make a fire. Then he would make breakfast and call little Willie. Hurry up, or you'll be eaten with the chickens, he would say. Then he would throw his head back and laugh. Once, little Willie went back to sleep. When he woke up, he found his plate out in the chicken coop. It was picked clean. He never slept late again after that. That is, until this morning. For some reason, Grandfather had forgotten to call him. That's when little Willie discovered that Grandfather was still in bed. There could only be one explanation. Grandfather was playing. It was another trick. Or was it? Get up, Grandfather, little Willie said. I don't want to play anymore. But Grandfather didn't answer. Little Willie ran out of the house. A dog was sleeping on the front porch. Come on, searchlight, little Willie cried out. The dog jumped to its feet and together they ran off down the road. Searchlight was a big black dog. She had a white spot on her forehead the size of a silver dollar. She was an old dog, actually born on the same day as little Willie, which was over 10 years ago. A mile down the road, they came to a small log cabin surrounded by tall trees. Doc Smith was sitting in a rocking chair under one of the trees, reading a book. Doc Smith, little Willie called out. He was out of breath. Come quick. What seems to be the matter, Willie? The doctor asked, continuing to read. Doc Smith had snow white hair and wore a long black dress. Her skin was tan and her face was covered with wrinkles. Grandfather won't answer me, little Willie said. Probably just another trick, Doc Smith replied. Nothing to worry about, but he's still in bed. Doc Smith turned the page and continued to read. How late did you two stay up last night? We went to bed early, real early. No singing or music or anything. Doc Smith stopped reading. And here's the picture on the page. There's Searchlight, and you can see Willie in the back with the trees, and then Doc Smith reading her book. Your grandfather went to bed without playing his harmonica, she asked. Little Willie nodded. Doc Smith shut her book and stood up. Hitch up Rex for me, Willie, she said. I'll get my bag. Rex was Doc Smith's horse. He was a handsome Palomino. Little Willie hitched Rex to the wagon, and then they rode back to Grandfather's farm. Searchlight ran on ahead, leading the way and barking. Searchlight enjoyed a good run. Grandfather was just the same. He hadn't moved. Searchlight put her big front paws up on the bed and rested her head on Grandfather's chest. She licked his beard, which was full of tears. Doc Smith proceeded to examine Grandfather. She used just about everything in her little black bag. What's that for? Little Willie asked. What are you doing now? Here's the picture, and you can see Searchlight on the bed and the doctor taking a look at Grandfather. Must you ask so many questions, Doc Smith said. Grandfather says it's good to ask questions. Doc Smith pulled a long silver object from her doctor's bag. What's that for? Little Willie asked. Hush! Yes, ma'am, I'm sorry. When Doc Smith had finished her examination, she put everything back into her little black bag. Then she walked over to the window and looked out at the field of potatoes. After a moment, she asked, How's the crop this year, Willie? Grandfather says it's the best ever. Doc Smith rubbed her wrinkled face. 
What's wrong with him? Little Billy asked. Do you owe anybody any money? She asked. No, Little Billy answered. What's wrong? Why won't you tell me what's wrong? That's just it, she said. There is nothing wrong with him. You mean he's not sick? Medically, he's as healthy as an ox. Could live to be a hundred if you wanted to. I don't understand, Little Willie said. Doc Smith took a deep breath, and then she began. It happens when a person gives up. Gives up on life, for whatever reason. Starts up here, in the mind first. Then it spreads to the body. It's a real sickness, all right. And there's no cure, except in the person's own mind. I am sorry, child, but it appears that your grandfather just doesn't want to live anymore. Little Willie was silent for a long time before he spoke. But what about fishing and the rodeo and turkey dinners? Doesn't he want to do those things anymore? Grandfather shut his eyes and tears rolled down his cheeks and disappeared into his beard. I'm sure he does, Doc Smith said, putting her arm around Little Willie. It must be something else. Little Willie stared at the floor. I'll find out. I'll find out what's wrong and make it better. You'll see. I'll make Grandfather want to live again. And Searchlight barked loudly. That's the end of Chapter 1. See you tomorrow for Chapter 2. Bye.